Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Well, for better or worse, we've really reached the final week of KSO Today, as the stated plan for this all along has always been just a brief Monday through Friday podcast uh, during Kansas State football and basketball season. And, you know, barring Kansas State winning the Big 12 tournament this week in Kansas City, the uh, Wildcats hoop season will come to a close this week, which also means KSO today will be off until the 2020 football season kicks off. We will, of course, continue to record the KSO show on a regular basis weekly. And we already started some chatter on what we're going to do as a uh, KSO retro type show throughout the offseason. It may be uh, evolving a bit from what retro was the last few years, but I still think it'll be good stuff. It'll be something not... Uh, as time sensitive, you know, that'll be more big picture, long term t- conversation about the past. I think it'll be a lot of fun this off season at Case It Online to kind of replace KSO today and then a more regular KSO show as sports aren't really going on. Before we get this show really going here on Monday, March the 9th, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor of the show, both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance Solutions, uh, both of which have locations here inside the city of Manhattan with eight other locations for PSB throughout the state of Kansas. Um, On today's episode, I'll talk K-State's blowout win over Iowa State and the regular season finale for both teams in Bramlage Coliseum last Saturday. Uh, A quick look at what's been on the site as of late and what to look for throughout this week. Let's start with the Oklahoma State, excuse me, Iowa State win. uh, As K-State beats Iowa State, I believe it was 79 to 63 in Bramlage Coliseum on Saturday. K-State really controlled this one throughout on senior day. Hammered the Cyclones, thanks in large part to Xavier Steen. I want to read through the kind of traditional stats for all of K-State's players in this game real quick. Mike McGurl, 10 points on 5 of 7. Very efficient there. Three boards, two assists, no turnovers, 31 minutes. Another very, I say another. I think he's had some nice games here and there. A nice game for Mike McGurl. Cartier Jada, also very good. I thought 14 points, 5 and 9 shooting. Five assists, just two turnovers. Five to two is fine. Three boards in 27 minutes. A very solid 27 for Cardi. Too bad to see Mac uh, foul out on senior day. He had a really rough game. Uh, five fouls, one point, four turnovers, 12 minutes. And I think Mac has played really pretty well, uh, relatively speaking, over the second half of the season, especially compared to what he did early and what K-State's results have been. I think he's played a little better than people have understood. But he was not good in this one. Uh, too bad for him. But I think he had a very nice career at K-State, and I wish him the best for sure. Xavier Sneed was the story. 31 points, 26 of those in the first half. He ended up finishing 10 of 21 on the field. Didn't shoot it very well after halftime, but 31.78 for the foul line. Gave you four boards, four assists, three turnovers, three fouls in 33 minutes. But 31 points in 33 minutes, that's a career high for Xavier Sneed on senior day. There was probably nobody I wanted to see have a bigger day selfishly on senior day than Xavier Sneed. So that was really, really cool to see, and I think much deserved for him. If anybody else you would like to have seen a big day for, it have been Pearson McAtee, and really, in reality, he had it. Six points, three of eight shooting, five boards, and assist, no turnovers, 25 minutes for Pearson McAtee, who started in place of Dejuan Gordon, which we'll get to in a second. At one point, Pearson was three of six from the floor. He made his first two shots. I mean, I think he made a legitimate impact in this game. K-State, of course, hammered a shorthanded bad Iowa State team, which uh, that's not changing a lot of things big picture about the season, so we're not trying to over-exaggerate what happened in this game, but I thought Pierce McAtee played well. He wasn't just a bit part in this game or a guy who got a, a token start and didn't do anything. He played 25 minutes, like I said, six points, five boards. He was efficient, didn't turn it over. I thought he played really well. He got that start because, of course, by now you all know uh, Dejuan Gordon, the freshman from Chicago, texted Bruce Weber and offered up his starting spot to Pierce McAtee on senior day. Thought he deserved it. Um, Pierce McAtee appreciated it a ton. Bruce Weber appreciated it a ton. Uh, Dejuan Gordon, I think, didn't think it was a big deal, ultimately. He thought it was just the right thing to do. Uh, Dejuan only plays 19 minutes in this one. Five points, two of four. Um, hit a three-pointer, two boards for Dejuan, one turnover in his 19 minutes. I thought, again, in his limited time, not very high usage, but played pretty well. David Sloan only plays 18 minutes. He does turn it over twice, gets two assists as well, five points and one of three shooting. Three of three from the foul line for David Sloan. Little things like that matter. I think David Sloan has a nice shooting form, but he has not shot well from the field or the free throw stripe this year. So I think any made shots for him, even as the season closes down, hopefully gives him some confidence going into the offseason. Because I think if he becomes a better shooter, a guy who can shoot in the low 30s from three and maybe the mid 60s from the free throw line, which isn't you know great numbers either, I think he becomes potentially a pretty good player for K-State with how well he distributes the basketball uh antonio gordon gets three points three boards in nine minutes nice little stretch for him levi stockard four points on two of two from the floor he looked uh, as good as he's looked probably barring the st louis game 
Um, as good as he looked all year, I thought he looked a little more athletic, a little more nimble. He had a couple of nice catches and finishes inside. I thought he played one of his 24 minutes. Nigel Shad gets on the floor for two minutes, does grab a rebound. K State again, 79 63. The Wildcats shoot 51.8% from the floor because they were dominant from two. Uh, eight of 26 from three at 30.8%, and pretty solid from the foul line. I think for the second straight game, I think they were good from the foul line at Oklahoma State, too. So 13 of 18. 72.2%. K-State avoids a single-digit win total in the regular season, getting to its 10th win. Uh, snaps a 10-game losing streak. Does ensure for anybody who you know cares uh, another winning record on the home floor. Uh, one of the longest, most obscure streaks, you know, probably in college sports. But K-State continues with the win over Iowa State, and I think it's nice, you know, especially for the seniors for Xavier Sneed. And hey, I'm going to go full fan for a second. Like this isn't journalism stuff here. Uh, I like Xavier Sneed. I like those kids. I think they're good people. I was personally selfishly happy to see them get to smile and enjoy themselves after a basketball game because it had been a long time, and I thought it was cool to see. As we move past that, we'll get back to basketball here in a second as we talk about what to look forward this week. A couple of things from Derek Young that have been very, very good on both Sunday and then this morning that I want to talk about. He had a recruiting notebook recovering our recovering, uh, covering our trip to Colorado as well as some other topics. I'm just going to give you the topics from that. It's a premium item. It's probably one of the most important things we do, so I don't want to give away uh, the information in there, but here's what he talks about. He has a couple of new recruiting forecasts where he makes projections of where kids are going to go. He opens up with that, lists a few names to look for. He references a commit elsewhere that K-State is now looking at and talking with. He talks about how big of a target Cherry Creek High School tight end Gunner Helm is, who we saw uh, this past week, who also got an Alabama offer, I believe, since we have seen him. He clears up some things on Arden Walker, another Colorado player we saw with the K-State offer. That's good to know. Some conversation there about Jabril Cox, the North Dakota State grad transfer who is very, very highly valued by programs across the country, including Kansas State. He talked about him some in there. And then I just shared, this is all free stuff, all of our videos from all the prospects we've talked to in Colorado. Over the last month, really, Braden Wood, Miles Purchase, Arden Walker, Gunner Helm, uh, and of course, commit Jake Rubley. Started this all maybe a month and a half, two months ago. So you've got that in there too. As well, on the football recruiting front, Derek this morning did release his new Kansas State football recruiting big board. 25 names to watch for K-State football recruiting. I'll give you the first five. and Maybe he'll be mad about me for that. I'm not sure. But the first five on the list, you'll have to look for the next 20. Uh, Jalen Knoll, wide receiver out of Kansas City. Bo Stevens, offensive lineman out of Bruce Stings, Missouri, number two. Devin Neal, running back out of Lawrence, Kansas, number three. Austin Weiner, son of Todd Weiner. Offensive tackle, I believe, is what position we're projecting him at. Out of now Gardner Edgington, he's moved to Kansas. Number five, Braden Wood, previously mentioned, defensive lineman who plays at Fairview High School in Boulder, Colorado, where we were last week. There are 20 more names after that, plus another 10 or 15 that he explains why they're not on the list and what's changed with them. If it's something you've never read before or not familiar with case State Online, I think it's really, really good stuff, and I think it's absolutely worth worth checking out if you have not before. But that's on there right now. Uh, also, Flando on the board this past weekend is working on a story. Did catch it? Well, he he literally caught a 2020, 20, 2022. That's 2022 hoops recruit in attendance at the game this past Saturday. Had a lot of information, I believe, we've learned from him. Played at the high, same high school as Montavious Murphy did, of course, down there in Texas. This is 2022, so this is a ways out. But a kid to watch for sure. Flando has a lot of information on the board about him. Going forward, we're headed to Kansas City on Wednesday to not just begin our coverage of the Big 12 tournament, but also to continue our recruiting road trip and interviews with K-State football commits Devontae Pritchard and Dorian Stevens in that area. We've already met with and shared interviews with commits you know, or targets Jake Rubley, Gunnar Helm, Braden Wood, Arden Walker, Miles Purchase, and Jaden Williams in football, plus commits uh, Davion Bradford and Luke Kusubiki for basketball. And we're going to continue doing this kind of stuff um, throughout the offseason too. Uh, hopefully adding some legitimate value to a site like ours when games aren't being played. We think there's things we have to show you that are new. And I can't just go back and rehash and do KSL Retro and, and tell you that's worth your money. So we're going to continue to hit the road and do this kind of stuff and hopefully uh, make you feel like you have value for your site at K-State Online. That really wraps me up for today. Look for another edition of KSL Today. It's not done just yet from Derek Young tomorrow. Please consider giving a subscription to Case and Online if you have not for the kind of recruiting coverage you see from Derek Young and Grant Flanders I referenced on this. Or just subscribe to our free YouTube page if you like this show, if you like the work we do. That really does support us as well. Hope you have a fantastic week and thank you for listening to KSO Today.